Hey guys, Billy Davison here with Davison Pressure Wash and Painting, Hammond, Louisiana. Wanted to make this video. I get a lot of requests for this video and it's really hard to uh, videotape uh, a trailer going down a highway. So this morning the, the trailer is here at my house. So I want to make this video on how we plumbed our buffer tank. I get tons of requests for this. So I'm gonna make this video today. Also, I want to mention if you need more help in marketing um, and how to get reoccurring contracts, how to price out your parking lot striping jobs, anything but pressure washing or parking lot striping, please check the description out. I have a link in there that you click on, bring it to my resource page. Got tons of training information on there. Also, I'll pin a comment, so be looking for that. Um, so yeah, so here we are with this pressure wash trailer. Now I'm gonna tell you this, we, um, I decided to go ahead and make this video today because we about to tear this bad boy down. Um, this trailer has been on the road for two years, sometimes running day in, day in out, day in and day out, night, um, daytime, everything. I mean, like three shifts a day sometimes. So that's no joke. This trailer has been around. We almost done wore the wheels off of it in two years. So it's getting new wheels. Um, we're giving it a whole new facelift. So if um, you want to see that, please like and subscribe this to this video and hit that notification bell. You'll be notified whenever we tear this one down and upload it. A couple things that issues we have with doing a tear down on a trailer is we never stop. Like I said, this trailer usually runs day in and day out. Um, sometimes two, three times a day is leaving to go make incredible amount of money. So if we tear it down, we got to be uh, like down for our work too. So usually what I've done in the past and I've done several of these, and I'm learning from each one, and we're going to talk about this in this video. So it may go on a little extra few minutes. Um, so we need to have everything ready to go, all supplies on hand, especially with everything going on with shipping and stuff. I've been a little reluctant to try to make a move on it, but um, it's getting that time. We're starting to have things fall apart, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. Some new changes I'm going to be making, and I may even be replacing these two little babies up front here, they both have thousands of hours on them. Um, this one closest to us runs great. The one on the other end seems to be giving us a little trouble with PSI. It's probably the pump. The pump I know can be rebuilt. And sorry about the wind blowing. I don't know if you can hear the wind in the camera, but uh, that one on the far side right there, um, it has about 1,500 more hours than this one. And I think this one right here close to us has about 2,200. And the only thing I've done to it is replace the belts. But we have a little PSI trouble with it. The engine's not burning any oil. The engine check the compression is perfect. I may put another pump on it. I may not. I may just ride like that for a minute. I don't know. Actually, I'm waiting to hear back from my CPA to see when the best time is to replace it. Because we're looking at $10,000 more than less. Um, two machines and, and a few accessories to go with it. So before I go ahead and drop 10 on it right now, I want to make sure it's a smart move to make uh, with my CPA. So we, we may remount these. If so, I may just have to pump rebuild. I'm going to have someone look at it. Or you might see two new little babies being dropped down, bolted down. So we just waiting to see from the CPA. But so when I do this trailer build, we need to have it done within 24 hours. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to come in here and just unbolt everything, rip everything off. We'll probably do it at the shop with all the tools. We have all our guys there, everybody on hand. Uh, we have lunch delivered, that sort of thing. We can't leave until it's, it's back up and running because usually the next few hours it's going to be getting hooked up and leaving. So my plan is to get a bigger tank, um, a new battery. That battery is two years old. It's been, you know, hot and cold, freezing temperature. So I'm going to just replace it and I'm going to make some changes. But what I want to get to is how to plumb these tanks. It's really simple. Um, and this configuration, I'm changing this too slightly. So basically, if you have a water tote, you have a two inch ball, uh, ball valve right there with a uh, male fitting. That, may, that male means it pokes out, it comes out. It does not, um, it's nothing that you screw in inside of it. It's a male fitting and you just put a two inch sleeve over, a threaded two inch sleeve. Once you get that two inch sleeve on it, half the battle is over with already so you already come out um a little bit right there as you see is it coming out Let's see if i can point at it here 
So once you get this two inch sleeve on this uh, ball valve fitting, then you can go ahead and make your connections here and then t put a T off and then go to the end over there. And I'm gonna walk over there and show you that in more detail. Now here is another uh, two inch uh, sleeve, a T, and then I just got this little sleeve in here. And then I got my flex line running to my pump here to feed my pump. Another thing, we'll be painting all this too. This trailer deck needs re repainted. Um, now, I made a mistake when I first plumbed this uh, years ago with not having, this is an inch line. I understand an inch and a quarter feeds these eight gallon per minute much better. So, uh, so if you only got a five and a half, this inch is perfect. And so this, these pumps aren't suffering, but it does give you a little bit better cooling ability and flow if you have that inch and a quarter here. And, and again, this is an inch. So it's just a sleeve with a nipple on it, pretty simple. Now what I do recommend, whenever you start to put your plumbing together, be friends with someone at one of these hardware stores like that's got plumbing and stuff, you know, like maybe uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, a somebody like that. Be friends with somebody in there because you might have to pull your trailer up there and work on it in a parking lot. And I've done that quite a few times. Um, Reason being, a lot of times you start putting this stuff together and this this feed line can't not be bent going in. I mean, it can have a sweeping turn to it that feeds the pump, um, but it can't have a 90 in it. It really can't even have a 45 in it. It needs to be, you know, a, just a sweeping slight turn. So that's very important. Now, um, this two-inch pipe, it, that's a minimum. I, I may go with a three-inch or a four-inch pipe. The reason being because the tank is a little bit higher than the pipe, and then you end up going to set set it on something. If not, you have nothing under it to, to support it there. So it'll be uh, it'll break the first time you go traveling down the road. Now, we have having issues with this coming apart here. So uh, even when our best glues, the vibrations and stuff like that. Now, if you do... And the reason being is because it was our fault, probably. We sometimes transport this tank with a little water in it, and this pipe will have weight in it, water weight in it, and bouncing around on a trailer it wants to pull on these seams and stuff. So what I recommend, if you transport in a little bit of water, close it off at your uh, valve there and empty this pipe out through your dump valve. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Now, um, like I said, what I'm going to do, I'm probably gonna go with a three or either a four inch pipe here. We're gonna figure that out and see what works best for our height. Um, now, what that's gonna also do, and this, I don't even know how to explain this, but if this pipe was a one inch, you would be bottlenecking the water coming out of a two inch, two, two inch dump valve on the tank, the main tank. Going into a one inch, you'd be bottlenecking it. So a two inch to a two inch obviously isn't bottlenecking it, but I'm thinking a two inch to even a three inch as this pipe fills up with water, this is almost like a small buffer zone too for this water. So when these, especially if you're running two machines, now if you're only running one machine, this two inch pipe is probably fine, but we run these two machines often and often combined with a Siamese kit, which is actually on it now. So I'm gonna go with a three or four inch pipe here, whatever fits perfect. And I'm going to just buy both. I mean, a little section of piping with a few dollars. When we go to do our teardown, we're going to have a three inch there. We're going to have a two inch and a four inch. Just to make sure whatever works, we have it on site. Um, so this, if I made this a four inch, this would be a slight little buffer zone too. Because uh, I don't want to bottleneck my water, especially drawing, you know, these are, these pumps run about nine gallons a minute. So it, with both of them wide open, you're probably drawing 18 gallons a minute out of this little pipe here. And I think this may be restricting us some. I'm not sure, but I'm going to uh, fix it just in case. If it doesn't help, oh well, it's only a few dollars. Like I said, one thing I do like about this trailer that, I, that we built a couple years ago was this dump valve. This, um, this dump valve is incredible to have. I mean, I see some people that don't have it. And I, I did build a trailer like one time without a dump valve. I just didn't know better. But... This dump valve means the world to us. You can dump your water out your tank. You can also fill buckets and stuff up here. Now, one mistake I did make, this dump valve um, is a little bit too low. I would like this distance between the dump valve and the ground to be a little bit more because I can barely slip 
a five gallon bucket under there. Well, actually I can. I actually got to tilt it to get it under there and then fill it up and then I got to tilt it out. So what's going to happen with our new build, this is going to be a little shorter. I may get a, a smaller profile dump valve here and um, I, I just need a little bit of more room, maybe another inch or two. I might even try to do three inches so just in case the, the ground or terrain that we, zone, that we park on. Um, so I want to be able to slide that bucket under there and out without bumping this right here and i've done it i've bumped it and knocked it off and water is just dumping evergrace is a mess so this is going to be reconfigured re-engineered um if i got to throw all this away that's fine this but this has been a beautiful man we love it you know we fill our buckets up here it's open now and that's what i'm saying i don't know if you see it's actually kind of moving a little bit but um whenever you're transporting it close that big ball valve up there and open this one that way no water weight is in here Cause that, and that's what's caused this to flex and get stressed a little bit. So we're going to redo all that. Um, we're going to put some new tires on it as well. These tires, I've got, had flats on them. They've been patched up and repaired. And I've been patched up on the side of the road at 2.30 a.m. after a nine-hour shift. And none of that is good. So all that's getting redone. I may try to get some tires that are run flat um, when I rebuild this trailer. The trailer is still in great shape. Um, it, it only has some surface rust on it, even after uh, two years of very heavy use. So we're good with that. Uh, we'll run this trailer a little while longer. A lot of guys ask if uh, how long a trailer lasts. Um, two to four years is usually my answer, depending on uh, how much usage you, you run it and if it's in weather. This one, this thing stays in a shop when it's not being used. So that helps out too. Um, let's talk about these two machines up front again. If you're gonna mount two of these eight gallon per minute machines, a couple things you need to think about, it's called thermal transfer. And then I'm gonna talk about those gas tanks in a minute and then, then put a wrap on this video. Um, these two machines exhaust from right here, obviously. So you need to watch that exhaust. However you configure that your trailer, your exhaust needs not to be blowing on a lot of stuff you don't need to be blown on your tank uh your water tank but definitely your gas tanks that, that wouldn't be too smart your battery box or other equipment i mean that exhaust gets really hot sometimes in the daytime when there's no wind situation blowing i mean that, and actually that exhaust can heat things up five to six feet away to un unbelievable temperatures you wouldn't want to touch it with your hand so the exhaust not only comes out of here but also we have that cooling fan right here that it's on the same on the, same on the other machine so it sucks in from the other side and it comes out right here so now it is deflected some at a 45 degree angle the way they have it set up in there so it doesn't exhaust it out this way but it's a little bit of upper angle but still you want to have these machines far enough apart so they don't thermal transfer energy back and forth and overheat each other. I had built another trailer, which these were on and it was a little bit too close and I would have to shut one down and now and then just to keep the other one from getting so hot. Um, also your battery box, uh, make sure you get a really good rock solid battery box. This battery box is going away too. We're replacing it with maybe a little something bigger, um, maybe even another compartment in it. Um, if I'm gonna have a, a battery box, I want it big enough to have uh, a couple compartments in it, gloves, goggles, anything, you know, something like that. I may even move this battery box out on a tongue, and that's something we're studying to um, maybe free up a little space here and maybe put it like a diamond plated uh, uh, toolbox. There's something that can handle a little heat. If it's plastic and it's got a higher profile here, like I said, it, it's going to catch this exhaust coming out at a 45. So whatever it is, if it's uh, going to be getting a little heat, we want to make sure it can handle heat and not go, not be plastic or some type of uh, composite, maybe some type of metallic. Um, so if I do move that battery box out to the um, tongue here, obviously I'll have to put a box out here, maybe a, a grate or something. It's really no big deal. Um, so I'm studying that as well, talking to a couple guys. And if y'all have moved y'all's battery box out to the tongue, let me know. Another thing this trailer might be getting, we are um, looking into it if we can find one, is an electric jack. Because oftentimes we pull this thing up and down seven, seven or eight times a day. And Lord, I guess old. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like much and we probably spoiled. But 
I mean, you know, with all the work we're doing and, and then all of a sudden we got Jack and I'm Jack the trailer so many times. Another thing here, we getting a new hitch because this rides just about two inches too low. When we go into our shop, it seems to drag the bottom of the jack. So I might get a um, electric jack there or either a fold up jack. Something. There's going to be some changes here for sure one way or the other. And again, this is, um, um, you know, basically I want to do all this. So hopefully I can with all the shipping issues. So again, keep these machines separated a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you these gas tanks and then I'll let you go. Uh, let me show you this real quick. Um, this is the way I plumb this tank. Now, the way your plumbing is set up could be very uh, specific to your trailer setup, depending on where your tank is. Um, now, your tank, you usually want about 60% of that weight uh, on the axle, above the axle. So look into that. Um, cause if you don't want your tank too far forward or too far backward. So it needs to kind of be kind of over the axle with a little positive tongue weight. So I usually go, you know, about 60% uh, on, on top of the axle. And that gives, you know, enough tongue weight, but not too, too much. Because once that tank's filled up, depending on the size of your tank, it's thousands of pounds. So this plumbing here on this side, again, it's that one inch. And I really should uh, have went with a one and a quarter, but I just didn't know any better. Um, I found out that later. And actually, it only received a one inch, so I thought it was fine. But they figured out later, see if I can get a shot on it there. They figured out later that this nipple needs to be one and a quarter. So I think if you've bought an eight-gallon machine lately, it's probably got the one and a quarter on it and not the one inch. I mean, these work, but I think that a little bit of extra flow helps. And that's, this is the machine that's lacking a little PSI. It's not much, but it is noticeable. Maybe three or 400 PSI at the end of a 300 foot or 200 foot hose. So maybe she's just tired. Maybe she's just, um, look, she owes me nothing. I mean, she's, she serves well, thousands of hours. Just, um, matter of fact, I got the spark plugs out of it now. We're getting new spark plugs right now. They go and get the plugs and coming back with it. That's what kind of, made me uh make this video i just pulled them out because um it was missing a little bit and uh that's the spark plug wire so i got both of them out on either side they just popped out they're missing a little bit so i looked at the plugs and they definitely fouled out so um these gas tanks it, these are the 12 gallon gas tanks for off of amazon if i find um find a, a link to it i'll post it in the comments or something i don't even it's been a couple years since i bought they 12 gallons each now what you want to do your gas tanks is always going to be on the side of uh your uh truck that you receive gas in so that's my fuel cap on this driver's side so obviously my gas tanks will be on the driver's side um if at all possible i know some guys you just can't do it and you got to hit two gas pumps and i get that you know whatever um so I got both of them over here. Now what I did, my fuel lines, that fuel line runs across the tongue, I mean across the front of the trailer and down this side of the trailer. So this tank is for that machine because it's closest. It's, you know, I wanted to, if I had to put it back here, it'd be even further away. So this rear machine, I mean this rear tank feeds this driver's side machine and the front tank feeds the passenger side. Just shaves off a few more feet for that gas to be running. I do have two gas filters between uh, the tank and the pressure washer. Uh, I was told years ago to run double filters for whatever reason. So uh, the guy was like an ace mechanic. So that's what he told me. So I did it. Yeah, you know, so we changed the two filters out periodically. They're only a couple dollars each. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But usually um, it's for troubleshooting, he said. Like if one filter has fuel in it, and the other one doesn't, you know, that one's clogged up. It's like for troubleshooting or something. So anyway, um, those gas tanks have been lifesaver for it. They hold 12 gallons each. A lot of guys ask, how long can we run? Um, usually we can run an entire shift off of one tank and still have a little bit in there. Um, and that's steady trigger time. You know, let's say six hours of trigger time, you spill it, it's probably going to go through um, eight gallons of gas. I never top them off completely. I always keep them about nine gallons, 10 gallons. I, 
just me and myself, you know, I never want to top them off completely. Give them a little breathing room, if you will. So, um, those gas things, like I said, they've been a lifesaver. You want to make sure they strap down. Again, one of my straps have came off. This is reasons why we're about to redo this. Um, the other strap's holding it pretty good. So that's for that. But so all it is, a lot of this is coming back the same way, but we're going to have some changes. The machines obviously is going to be there. The battery box may move out. The only reason why I'm not sure if I'm going to bring the battery box out because sometimes, and I know we don't supposed to, but we pass through right here on a job site. I, do, I tell my guys, I never want to see them passing through between the jack and the bumper. Never. Under no circumstances. I don't mind if you pass through here, but then if you're passing through here, you start running a risk. Someone grab one of those mufflers if they trip and fall. You know, so we try not to do a pass through, but sometimes we get tired and we pass through instead of walking around and everything. If I put the battery box there, that would eliminate the, um, the ability to be able to pass through there. And then they might end up still trying to pass through, but the jack and the bumper. So reason why you don't want to pass through the jack and the bumper, because obviously for safety reasons, you can... You know, knock your chains off and knock it on latch and not, you know, you working. So sometimes you're tired. So in here now I'm about to pass through right here, right? <laughs> so um, that's one reason why I'm not sure if I'm going to put the battery box there, but I probably will. I have seen one guy mount his box, his battery box under the trailer. I think it's a great idea other than, uh, man, if you got an issue, you got to get on the trailer, you know? So, um, he had his mounted under there some kind of way. I don't think I'm going to try that. Um, but other than that, if y'all uh, got any other suggestions when we do this trailer build, um, maybe the color of the deck, Hey, you know, maybe comment that in the box below. If you are still with me, um, well, this is red, obviously I thought about a couple of the colors, um, but we're going to take it all out, sand it. Actually, um, we're going to have to have another pressure washer there to pressure wash the deck before we paint it because this will be all disassembled. So anyway, guys, again, I'm Billy Davison. Thanks for watching my uh, trailer uh, walkthrough and my buffer tank setup. Hopefully this helps um, when you're doing your buffer tank plumbing. And again, try to keep it simple because there's always going to be breakdowns. There's always things that's going to come loose on a job site. I mean, after all, you're bouncing up and down these badass roads around here and wherever you at. So you got to think about that. Um, mounting this stuff, maybe on rubber bushings. We're going to look into that. So we probably plan on doing our trailer be rebuild, um, hopefully in September. Um, and that's if I can get the, the stuff here. So I do have some stuff slowly trickling in that I've been ordering. And oh, and also, um, we're getting a soft wash pump from Cody Southeast Soft Wash. We're looking at, very excited about that. We'll be traveling down to his area to pick that up in the next few weeks and uh, be looking a place to. Uh, we actually will probably put that in the back of a uh, mid sized truck and be a dedicated roof system. So, a lot of new changes coming. So, y'all stay tuned. Please like, subscribe, comment below what color this deck should be. Again, I'm Billy Davison here with. Davidson Pressure Wash Painting. We'll talk soon.